Hello and welcome to the Drew and Stu podcast. I'm Drew Livingstone. That's Cam Stewart. Cam, happy Easter. Uh, he has risen. The, by risen, I mean my bankroll because we had a good weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Not God. I, I can tell you one thing. Yeah, the bankroll. I'll give Drew, ladies and gentlemen, like Drew does picks and he's a Colorado Avalanche guy. But I got to tell you, like your claim to fame, dude, you've been rocking the NCAA tournament. Like your dogs outright, like apparently why? I, I, NFL season. I don't know what we're doing, Drew, but uh, we got to get you a, 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 a NCAA basketball like gambling show. Just it because you hit Duke, you hit Alabama, you we we rode Clemson as far yep. as we could, and, and I had State. all three of them parlayed. It was like cha ching, cha ching, cha ching. I was like, this is amazing. Uh, it's... So who screwed us, Drew? The Big East, not <sighs> yep. friends. Creighton, yep. screw you. Any team named Blue Jays, they'll screw you. And another team, Marquette, you ruined me and Drew's dreams. We would have had, like, honest to God, if they just would have won one more game. Dude, if Creighton just won the last game, I'd be in line to win my $15,000 bracket pool. I'd be like, this is amazing. And then they had to lose. And I was like, how the fuck do you lose that game? I just. (laughs) Dude, every week, it's like the NFL season. Our 9 out of 10 came in. Our 8 out of 9. Like, we never hit the base. And then the Duke Blue Devils lose to NC State. I was like, what? Duke? That's. I'm going to say this before we get on to the picks, and I know we're going to do Frozen 4 as well. Uh, it's been great. I love NCAA hockey, Drew. It's fantastic, and it's been a really good bettable uh, product. Here's the deal. Duke, they would have lost to Houston if Houston's main player didn't go out, too. They're not that good. Yeah. And NC State right now, they're feeling it. And I got to give kudos to you, too. We talked about you're a Clemson guy. The ACC has been money in the bank. And They've you said at the beginning of the tournament, you're like, the ACC sucks. They're not going to do anything. And then all of a sudden, all of them kept winning. That's what I say, Drew. The funny thing is, two years ago, it was like, oh, the Pac-12 sucks, and all their teams went deep. Like, whatever the announcers say, like, I don't even know why I'm listening. Just do your own thing, because you're right. The ACC has been fantastic. Um, yeah, and it was a, a bit of an iffy golf tournament. I bet you didn't have the outright winner, did you? Oh, uh, Drew, uh, let's, t- let's talk about golf. Um, <laughs> I'm watching on Sunday, the usual, and I go, wow, another week. I got Ash K. Batea at 75 to 1. Guy's leading after 10 holes. Next shot sideways buried in the bunker he's a left-hander out it comes up the hill rolls back into the bunker i go oh okay that's a bogey at best and i'm sitting there i go oh another one of my guys thomas dietry live bet i bet him at 16 to 1 on friday when i was doing the show with gabe he takes the lead four foot putt miss six foot putt miss oh billy horschel one of my other pooches coming right down the door running out of holes and the one week you, i don't take jagger bomb i've been betting i was gonna say that's jagger your guy more than i've been drinking that's jagger your guy bombs. i know drew honest to god like i just i'm in orbit right now i'm glad your bankroll is doing well but i gotta tell you golf betting it's the most lucrative and the worst all rolled into one because only one guy wins the tournament so yep. and you can't hedge when there's a seven way tie for the lead. I can't. Pick, it was. I can't it was way. It was way too many guys at the top yes, of the leaderboard yes, there, Cam. Yes, and then yes. honestly, I thought Scotty Scheffler was just going to run away with it, so I took a live bet on him. That was a fucking dumb decision by me. Uh, here's the deal with Scheffler. Um, the guy's so he doesn't miss putts, but it was just one of those things. It's like he's going for three tournaments in a row, and you know, it's just watching that guy miss a five foot putt is just crazy. But now this all this does is fuel his fire going into mm-hmm. the masters and that's a bad bad vibe i know only one guy wins but what's scheffler going to be at the masters i'm going to think four to one i think under i think it'll be like plus 350 but we'll really figure that one out yeah you know, everyone's going to bet Scheffler. like hey guy's a defending champion so we'll, we'll see uh, so yeah we'll cam no one's going to bet him if he's below four to one i don't i can't uh, see. know what you do though this is the thing about golf betting people will bet him at the start and drew he's so good Say he has a bad round, you might get him. Like you yeah. can only live bet Scheffler. It's one of those things, and you almost have to hope. But even if he starts, let's say five leader. over, he's going to be like fifteen to one tops. Yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. So anyway, there's other guys that I bet for the Masters, but we'll have a Masters show next week. I am going to New York, Drew, because I haven't Ooh. been out of my house in about five years, and you know I've had a lot of uh, things going on with my family. My girlfriend's like, we're not canceling this trip, so. I'm going to go see the Leafs and Devils on in a, in a box. with At the Rock? Burrell. Yeah, going to the Rock. One of the, arena, one of the only arenas I've ever been to. And I'm talking to my friends who are Islander fans. Might do the Thursday night Islander game versus Habs. That'd so be I fun. I might be doing, oh, trust me. I'm, I'm, yeah, I got to tell my girlfriend to go shopping that night because she probably won't be too happy if I'm going to two hockey games. But the one is all you can drink in the booth. That's the one she wants to go to. <laughs> Oh, that's a, that sounds like a great time uh the, the thing is though yeah, cam what i hate remember make your bets make your bets yes. before you cross the border otherwise they won't let you when you're online you're like clicking and they won't let you 
Oh, Drew, I might have to give you some passwords. That's right, because uh, Masters is there. I'm going to have to give you a long list of stuff. We'll talk. After. Hey, you're not you're not far from Atlantic City. You can go just play some bets in person. That's what I might have to do. My, that's the best. What are you doing? Taking a bus to Atlantic City. Why? <laughs> Betting? Yeah, just got a, a big wad in your pocket just to lay it all on the Masters to lose. Can, before we get move on from the Masters, Cam, right now Tiger Woods currently 250 to 1 to win the Masters. Even no. worth a sprinkle? No. The thing is, I remember before when he did win, Drew, he looked like he was kind of trending in the right direction. I know he can play the course blindfolded, but no prep, no, like he hasn't done anything. His injuries are a lot worse than people think. Sure, you know, if you want, hey, I bet on guys who I think are going to win, so why not put $10 on Tiger Woods? Like, it's the same. A losing ticket's a losing ticket, right? One thing I will do, Cam, uh, for sure, he has a prop right now, 18-1 to for Tiger Woods to birdie the first hole in any of the four rounds. Yes. Can, yes. He, he, yes. Like you said, he can do that his, the course with his eyes closed. He can't birdie the first hole. For sure, we've seen him start birdie the first hole all the time, and then he'll just fall apart after. I think he could easily birdie the first hole for 18-1. I, I wouldn't even be shocked if he like kind of plays well for a round because he could do it before he gets deal. tired. He's you're right. that good. The whole thing with him, though, is if he's there, just take him. Like If he makes the cut, and I've, I've learned, Drew, and actually this is a really good betting tip, fade him in the third and fourth round. Especially if he's really out of it in the fourth round, he's just kind of like taps out and goes, you know what? I, I think they got to make the exception anymore. and give him a golf cart. Like I'm sick of this whole they have to the guys have to walk. Like it's Tiger Woods, let him ride a golf cart. No, Drew, we're no, no. See, and again, Casey Martin was a guy who played at Oregon with a degenerative like like disease where he couldn't walk, and they didn't give him a cart. It's true. I know Tiger. I know Tiger Wood is like a great guy. John Daly was overweight, whatever. I can't move. You know, I'm out of shape. Give him a cart. No. That's part of golf. You have to walk the course. And I'm not, I don't care if you're Tiger Woods or God, as you talk about with your Easter bets, like nobody gets a cart. No, I'm sorry, Drew. There's no lifetime achievement award where you get a cart and everybody else has to walk the course. And the one thing about the masters is I've been there. It's a lot hillier than people think. That's what I mean. If you want to play the course, you got to walk it like everybody else can give them a cart. Fair. All right, fine. Cam hates Tiger Woods. Heard it here first. Uh, No, 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 Drew. I love you. But like the things that you say sometimes are just like, Imagine going up to everybody. I'm just saying, Cam, going, we're think giving about, Tiger Woods a cart. <laughs> I'm just saying, think about the ratings difference on TV when Tiger Woods is in the in the hunt versus not. And the best way to get him in the hunt is to give him a freaking golf cart and not have him walk these hills. Okay, so me and you are p- playing for, you know, our family and everybody else. And we're watching Tiger Woods in a cart, like playing a course where we're walking. Oh, it'd be hilarious. Days. It'd be hilarious. You know what? They can do it, but it's not going to be cool. Like, and then you get some like, GoPros in the cart and listen to him mic'd up live and just make it a whole like Capital One the match thing. It'd be. I'm sure that I'm sure that'll work at the Masters when I saw a guy drunk <laughs> fall down a hill and basically they said, "Sir, not just you are arrested, your family's arrested, your kids' families arrested." It was that grandpa, serious? Oh yeah, it was unbelievable. They basically, I watched this guy. They go, "Dude, you're banned. Your family's banned. Give me your ID. Anybody related to you is banned." Like the guy rolled down a hill like drunk when it was like all raining. Yeah. <laughs> He's like and sliding. They escort and, everybody. Oh, I, I was. I show. I told my cameraman. I could watch this guy. He's in big trouble right now. Next thing you know, Masters police. He go and I and I saw him go. Like basically, do they wear special uniforms? Back to this tournament. What do the police there wear special uniforms? No, they actually wear green jackets. They, no they way. Carry, yeah, yeah, yeah. Their guys are around the golf course, and they also have security. But there's like old guys in green jackets to make sure like people aren't too lubricated. You're not like rolling down a hill or like the thing about the Masters is it has a lot of good. Being the prices where your every sandwich is a dollar fifty. I heard the beer. one dollar pimento oh. sandwich is like the best thing ever. Dude, Drew, it's amazing. I I, I remember I filled a bag for like twenty five bucks. I'm like <laughs> one beer at a Leafs game is thirty bucks. Like you know what I mean? Like for a jumbo, I'm getting Masters sandwiches and chip, but everything is Masters brand. It's not like Hershey or whatever. It's like yeah. Masters chips, Masters sandwich, Masters chocolate. Like everything is it. All it has is the Augusta logo. I'm gonna tell you, it, Masters is pretty cool, but. Don't screw around there. Like, if there's some guy, like, blowing a joint or whatever, and, like, next thing you Just know, the hell away guy from comes him. up behind <laughs> you, yeah. They'll ban, they'll ban you and your family. They find out who you are. It's like a Dateline episode. I knew one guy who went to the Masters, and he'd spent $2,500 in the gift shop because he's like, everyone was sending me money to buy them stuff. And he said, you wouldn't believe the amount of money that's dropped in that gift shop because everything's like, oh, it's $300 for a hoodie, $400 for this golf shirt. It's just... <laughs> Uh, yeah. I, I don't know. Did you drop a bunch of money when you're in the gift shop? Oh yeah. Big time. I bought flags for all my friends. I bought masters balls. I got masters ball markers. Like when you're there once I should have done more. Actually, my biggest regret was I should have done more. I bought yep. a hat, one of those stupid bucket hats, but problem was I got, hey, those, like, aren't tuned up those are awesome. Caught. 
Oh, no, no, but now mine's all deformed because it got wet in the uh, water. And, like, it looks awful. Like, I should have kept it pristine. Master's shirt, it's got pit stains because I wore the wrong deodorant before they had good <laughs> deodorants with, you know, that are, like, clean. Yep, on yep. The, like, the white shirt. I destroyed so many of my master things. But, Drew, if you ever get a chance to go, bring, like, $1,000 and buy everything. I'm in the lottery every year, Cam. Still haven't won the chance to even go to a practice round. So, hopefully. What are the craziest thing, too? At the end, they have a draw to see who gets to play the course at the end. And... David Faraday, you know, and all the golf guys that like, came into my tent, it was the best line ever. He goes, I'm looking for a big fat Scotsman and not you. And they pointed at me and everyone started laughing when I was like <laughs> big. But the guy from TSN, Corey Warren, yeah, yeah. won the draw and got to play Augusta. No he way. He was in the international tent. Yeah. What, he, he, lucky guy, unlike me. I, I heard a story of that when I was in college, one of the media guys went around there and he said he didn't know how to play golf, but he was like, I'm not going to not play golf. So he said he was just hacking it up like over 150. He shot hundred. Oh dude, we shoot. It's actually, are you a lefty? Yeah. Me too. Yeah, that's right. We golf together. It's yeah. actually drew. It's a dream left-handers course. Cause all the dog legs are left. Yeah, All the slices. Hence that's Mike, why I left. He does well. Weir, hence Mike, we are winning the masters and stuff like that. So hence why Bubba was all Bubba's still my yeah. favorite round of the masters ever. Uh, I think he, uh, if he stayed in his prime, he could have done, if he took care, better well, care of himself. Your, your favorite golfer, the guy bought the general Lee. <laughs> <laughs> I do love Bubba. That pink driver was the best. Um, all right, let's move on to the, the final four cam of the men's basketball tournament. Uh, we got sure. Purdue hosting the surprise NC state right now. They're nine and a half point favorites. The Purdue Boilermakers, 75% of the public right now cam is on NC state. Cam, I can't go with NC State anymore. I know they've every time I bet against them, they still win. They still cover. But you know what? I can't. Everyone's on NC State now. They're the Cinderella story. This is where it comes to an end. I don't care what you say, Cam. You can't convince me otherwise. Purdue by 20. Drew, I'm going to tell you, remember me and you, our big Marquette pick, and everybody, all, even though Marquette was like, oh, you're all Marquette, Marquette. I learned my lesson with NC State. Don't mess with these guys. They've already beaten Duke. They're a really good team. They got the big man in the middle, too. Like It's, it's actually hilarious. You might get exactly. drafted to the NFL, Cam. You know what? Great point. And let's talk about this now. And me and Gabe talked about it last night. Obviously, he's never going to play in the NBA because he's got no cardio. Yeah. But he's a big guy. He's over 300 pounds. And also, he's got really light feet. Apparently, Drew, five NFL teams, I've been, this, these are the reports, have yep. talked to him. And if he could find a way to ground himself and have like a big lower half and not get pushed into the quarterback and just learn fundamentals, why wouldn't you take a shot at him? He's a freak of nature. And he obviously can't play basketball at the next level because he's not fast enough. Yeah, your last pick in the draft, take a chance. Yeah, I I agree, man. Like, hey, Brock Purdy was a Mr. Irrelevant. Look what he's done in the draft. Why wouldn't you take a shot in a guy that's an absolute freak of nature? Drew, I got to take NC State. Interesting. I I think Purdue's going to win the game. Even with this much public on that side. Yeah, I I know I'm going to get burned. But the one thing about this team is there's something special going on. It was actually hilarious. They had interviews like, what's different about you guys? Well, we're showing up for practice on time. Care. <laughs> like all the things, like I didn't realize they were just like, yeah, who cares? Like, we're just going to do whatever we want. And apparently like they made a message, like we're not screwing around anymore. Everyone's going to go to the team meetings and I, I don't even know what to say. They're Cam, like, their strategy is hilarious. It's just today. feed the big boy. It's that's it. That's their offensive strategy. And he just, he just does whatever he wants down there because no one can cover him. The white guy who plays lacrosse too is very good. He's a mm-hmm. very good, like, Thing about NC State is they actually have underrated players, like not star marquee guys, but guys are very fundamentally sound. And that's the one thing. Purdue has Zach Eady under the basket. Our boy can hang with him for a while. The problem is Eady's a freak. He's even like, he's t- like, it's going to be a real battle underneath. And the question is foul problems. Get into foul problems, then Purdue will win by 20. So it's something I, 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 think, I understand. I don't think this is going to be close at all, Cam. I, I Maybe I'm wrong. I thought Duke was going to smoke them too, and they didn't. I think that was more of a both ACC teams, so they, they were familiar, so that, I shouldn't have thought that. Um, but this is a difference, Cam. Uh, I think Purdue's just way better. I think they're going to be in the finals. Um, so we disagree. Uh, no mystery tiebreaker man on this one, but the public likes NC State, so we'll make that the tiebreaker. <laughs> you got you to gotta bring him back. Who's he taking? Yeah. Is he taking Purdue, the favorite? No, I, I don't know. I'll have to ask him probably. Uh, no, him. Be. Um, total, Alabama you, against UConn, Cam. No, 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 no. Total, 146 and a half. Does that seem a little bit high to you? I like the under. I kind of lean over because I think it's going to be like 90 to 65. Um, oh, really? Yeah, like I, I think Purdue scores almost 100 on them, Cam. Why would I? Why would I mess with you, Drew? You've been you've been crushing it in these things. I'm doing okay, but you're doing a hell of a lot better than me. So listen to Drew, everybody. Don't listen to me. <laughs> we'll, see. Guy, we'll see. We'll see. He's the basketball whisperer, NCAA style. 
Um, this one, I love the one side. You're probably on the same side as this. Connecticut, minus 11.5 against Alabama. Public, slightly on Alabama side. I love Alabama, plus 11.5 in the spot cam. Connecticut hasn't had their scare yet. I mean, you both know, we've mentioned this a million times, that if you're going to win the tournament, you need that scare. I think this is that scare. Connecticut pulls out a very, very close one, in my opinion. You know what the funny thing is, Drew? Connecticut has obviously like remember that illinois game was close and then they just go in like a 35 oh, yeah. run dude 40 almost a 40 to zero run oh it's ridiculous this team is so damn good hurley's a great coach they're strong in every area but i do agree with you the nice. one thing you can do against these guys i'll never forget st john's tried it earlier they basically said let's run a track meet and if they beat us they beat us and they st john's almost got it done mm-hmm. patino had the game plan to do it the difference is alabama's better and can do it. Connecticut's going to win this game, but it's going to be a scare. I see them winning between like five and seven with free throws at the end of the game. I'm with you, Drew. Give me Alabama plus the points, Connecticut to win and move on. And I think they're probably going to win the day. doesn't matter who plays them, Purdue or NC State. They will win the NCAA. Tournament. I think whoever wins this game, if Alabama pulls off the upset, I think Alabama beats Purdue as well. I think whoever wins this game wins the tournament. I don't know. I think Purdue matches up well against Alabama, but we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. But Yeah, uh, we'll like figure it out when it happens. Like but, okay. I got agreement. futures on UConn, Drew. One of the only smart things I did during the year. I think yep. I got them at 14-1. to 1. We're uh, were currently 20th, I game. think, in our bracket pool. Let me look. Hang on. Uh, it's not that bad. You said we were brutal. There were 63 people in the, in the thing, oh, and we have... Okay. We're 20th. Bad. That's not too bad. Eh, Considering bad. everyone saw our bracket cam, it's pretty good. Considering we also did it like on the fly and didn't really discuss much with each other. It was kind of <laughs> one of those things. Let's do it for fun. And we didn't really argue any. Actually, I should have just listened to you. We'd be in like fourth. Yeah, that's I mean, but doing. hey, you didn't like Clemson. So that's why we didn't have Clemson anywhere deeper in that tournament. Uh, yeah, I, I learned quick to bet on Clemson after they did well, though. <laughs> the problem was it was too late. Uh, we had TCU in the Elite Eight. We had Marquette in See, the final. See, I didn't like that. Hey, hey, give me a little bit of credit. I told you I don't like that. Yeah, you did. You did. That, you was, did. You, that was you uh marquette in the finals that was you though so uh that was sick yeah well, 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 whatever we we picked it together and we have we can still if connecticut wins we're going to jump a lot higher in the stands that's the only one in our final four that's still left okay but we'll see all right cam moving on to the ice tonight uh we got a big slate of no, games no no, in no, hockey. no 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 oh you want to do the final four ice four. first yeah yeah you're right you're right the frozen four, frozen four. the frozen four frozen four has been fun you're a big hockey guy yes you know, it is and I, i'm a yeah. big denver guy because you know the colorado avalanche denver's there eight same city uh i think denver pioneers are going to win it all cam they're seven to one they're five to one still to win it all um what do you think am i crazy you think it's gonna be boston versus boston right it's and say you're crazy. I love Denver at the start too. I, they were getting, I wish you bet them at the start. They were like 15 to one, but here's the thing about the Denver pioneers. They're a damn good hockey team. Mm-hmm. They're not the best, but they're battle tested and they're very, very strong. Drew, by the way, a lot of these players in this tournament, like remember when the Leafs picked up nice, when he played for like Minnesota, like uh, the Leafs just picked up that kid from Quinnipiac. Apparently they beat the Boston Bruins out in bidding. Watch out for these kids. They he go, won't play they though. Get, won't play. Oh, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll talk. Cam, a lot this. of these, a lot of these undrafted college free agents end up playing like four years in the AHL and don't do nothing. So I'm not too <laughs> excited. Oh, okay. Quinnipiac's the, the, the defending champions. This guy's a real player. But anyway, let's not get. It'd into be this great now. for the Marlies. This yeah, is this is not Gino Retta and let's talk hockey right now. But I'm going to tell you, no, no. A lot of these guys actually. Okay, what about when Makar, whatever for for your Avalanche? He, he was drafted. It's different. NCAA player. No, but. But a lot of these undrafted guys still get called up for the team. Like, Nyes got called up for the Leafs, but he got hurt in the playoffs. No, yeah, exactly. I agree with you. When the player's drafted and that happens, fine. But when they're undrafted for college free agents, they are not. They don't usually pan out. I think the biggest one was like Alex Kerfoot. And Jimmy VC was supposed to be very good, and he ended up not working out. Yeah, VC had a lot of pro- injuries and stuff like that. He was a good player, though. But anyway, yeah, this is uh, here nor there. Explain, explain why you like Boston University, the Terriers, over the Pioneers. They have so many... Any- oh. Actually, I'm defending your argument right now because they have a lot of guys that are drafted into the NHL. They're very strong. They've always been that way. They are a tournament favorite. Drew, I'm going to be honest with you, though. We have to take a shot. We have to take an upset. And I'm going to go with I'm, – I'm, I'm with you. And you just seem to have the, the Irish luck right now. It's not St. Patrick's Day. We're into April. But it just seems to be – I don't know what you are. Like you touch a rabbit foot. Like good, good things are happening in your life. Like my toilets are breaking and my sink's breaking, but you're winning money. I'm going to follow <laughs> you. I'm going to take the Denver Pioneers. And it's funny. One of our good friends, Julio, comes on our show all the time. 
he covers the Denver ho- like hockey mm-hmm. team and stuff like that. So we get an inside uh, scoop. He, he's at the Frozen Four. They're getting better all the time. They had a real scare early. They went to double overtime and won their game. But Denver is a very, very steady team, and I think they can win. So we're getting a nice price right now. What do you get, 140 plus 140? Yep. I'm on Denver. Give me the Denver Pioneers in this spot, too. So I'm going to go Denver Pioneers against Boston College in the finals. You parlay those two teams to win, it's plus 265. I'll take it. I, I like that, too. And who's going to win the final? Are well, we if you think Denver's going to win the final, then you just take them out right right now at 5-1. to one. Yeah, and then, you know, yeah, great call, Drew, because even it, they will be dogs, but not that big of a dog, so it's a good hedge opportunity if you put enough on it. The problem is, like, in the NCAA tournament, if you take UConn as like a favorite, whoever they play, they're going to be math. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like you have to do the math before we're talking about the hedge, but yeah, I'm with you, bat buddy. I think that, I think Denver can, I, I bet them to make it to the final four was one of the best bets at minus minus one thirty eight. They drew their path was the easiest path though. If you mm-hmm. look at the games they played, they were very, I wish players. you uh, told me about this before the tournament started. Cause I would have uh, hammered it with you. Well, true. I do a lot of things in life, and we didn't really get down to uh, the NCAA hockey tournament. That's true. But, uh, we're going to be on it again because you're a good hockey guy. Did you enjoy the Avalanche losing to Columbus last night? No, I did not enjoy that. I didn't enjoy the better Kneelander scoring two goals. It was a uh, interesting that guy's to see. Good. Yeah, better Kneelander. Dude, can't believe Kyle <laughs> Dubas let this guy walk. Like, this guy just I... traded him for nothing. Kyle Dubas is going to ruin Pittsburgh. It's funny. So the Leafs have Treliving and Dubas. The Calgary Flames are basically every great Florida Panther player. The yeah. Calgary Flames are the Florida Panthers. And Dubas is going to, like, Drew, good call by you, Drew. Like, this Nylander guy is un. He just gave up on him for nothing, and now he's got 12 goals in, like, 13, or in, like 22 games for Columbus. Like, it's just. Wow, what a GM. Me and you drunk could have done a better job. But anyway. This, That's this crazy. Um, Cam, parlay, I got, uh, I got two units on NC State Alabama parlay outright. Uh, this is NCAA basketball. What do you think that pays? NC State and Alabama outright. Yeah, I'm gonna think 27 to one. 22 to one. It's not bad. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I was like, I was like, I have head. to take that because this could easily happen. Uh, it's just, yeah. uh, I don't know. What easily. Else do we got here. Um, all right, we so go to Valero. Else? Let's go Valero, Texas Open before we look at the ice tonight. We'll finish okay. with the ice tonight. Um, sure. I know you got a lot of golf picks. You usually do a six pack and then you sprinkle in probably another six live. Let's be honest with the viewers. It's probably you usually have 12 guys going. If you had, to, if they yeah. had to guess. I'm gonna right? be honest with you, Drew. Um, Golf used to be my favorite thing on Sunday. It's become a torture chamber. I've had the leader in every golf tournament this year, like at least after nine holes too. None of them have won. I've hedged a couple times that have been good, but the problem is last week's tournament, they literally had seven guys tied for the lead. Who's this toasty guy who went to Florida too? He's an absolute animal. You want to talk about a guy who rages on the course? Me and you should golf. This guy's ready to like snap clubs and break trees. But I anyway, had a buddy who had a lot of money on Tony Finau, Cam, and was not happy with that final so round. Was, so was Billy the doorman. He texted me. Oh, really? I hate, I hate Finau. That guy's got a loser swing. He's a gagger. Like, I, dude, I'm reading, like, this War and Peace novel. It's like, dude, I got Dietrich and <laughs> I got Ash K. Batia. I got my own problems. And no offense, Finau was 30 to 1. My guy was 80 to 1. Yep. So who's got more problems? And Billy Horschel made a huge run, too. Down All right, board. so give us your six-pack for this tournament, Cam. The Valero Texas Open, the lead-in into the Masters. I like to look at the guys that need to win or need to do really well to make the Masters yeah. and bet them. Um, I don't have that list in front of me, though, Cam, because I didn't get it. So uh, I don't know if you have those Drew, guys, but I We're going to do a big Masters show next week. Yeah. Here's what we're going to do right now. Um, I'm not – I don't have a six-pack. I basically have uh, – I drank two beers, and I have a long shot. So <laughs> four and a half beers. So I have drank one and a half, and uh, – we're going to go hit the golf course. Ludwig Aberg is my top pick if you like chalk at 14 to 1. Mm-hmm. It's also, for people who don't know about Aberg, he's probably the, one of the best young golfers in the world. He's amazing. He's taken some time off, but also, Drew, another thing, what school did he go to? Texas Tech. What state are we playing in? Texas. Mm-hmm. Also, I think he wants to do some damage before the Masters. I will take Aberg at 14 to 1. Also, looking at a Swede, Alex Norin. At 32 to 1. Played great last week in the final round. I know a lot of people that bet him almost got it done. I'm taking guys who trended well last week as well. Billy Horschel. He loves, hey, he's a Georgia Bulldog. You don't think this guy wants to get fired up for the Masters? 35 to 1. And he let me down this week. 
Drew, this kid is about 80 pounds soaking wet. <laughs> Very talented. Ash K. Batea was leading the golf tournament last week. I really like what I see from him at 65 to 1. And there's two moops, two moors. I'm going to go with my old friend, one of my favorite golfers, Ryan Moore. It's kind of like me. He lost like 60 pounds. He's got a game. He's an old guy. Doesn't hit it very far. But I'll tell you one thing. He's playing pretty good this year. 150 to 1. You told me you, you like moops as well. Yeah, I love Ryan Moore this week. Uh, he's a Texas guy. He loves playing in Texas, Cam. I like him yeah. top 20. Top 20 is plus 400. So I'm going to be, that's what bet I'll be making more so than him outright. Um, yeah, he's top two in fairways gain, driving percentage, a bunch of stats, Cam. Uh, I love Alex Noren top 10 this week. That's 3 to 1. That's plus 300. Um, I like the top 10s, top 20s in this tournament a little bit more than the outright guys. Me too. Um, Mark you Hubbard, like another guy Hubbard? I like. He's... You like Hubbard for a top 20? You know what, Drew? Yeah. And I learned, a, I learned a variable, valuable lesson that I think is really important to tell the listenership and viewership. I had <laughs> Nate Lash, nasty Nate Lashley at uh, to win the tournament. Okay, He's like 500 to 1 or whatever. But I had him top 40 at plus money. I also had him top 20. Top 40 was like plus 310. Why do you play top 40s with long shots? Because know what he finished? 21st. Oh, my God. Not T20, 21. And I'm going to tell people, it in golf, you'll have a guy 11th, 21st, mm-hmm. 42nd. It's the way these tournaments are formulated. I've been betting golf since I was a young child. And I'm telling you, Drew, if you get a guy at, like, low juice, take the top 40, the security of having a winner is important. I know we all want to hit a big home run, but you know what? Hitting a single and making money is sometimes very good to do. So just a tip out there, take the top 40s with guys who are like 100 to 1 or more. I agree. Uh, and I, I like Alex Norton, first round leader, Cam, 45 to 1. Uh, yep. Mark Hubbard, first round leader, is 200 to 1. So I'll take that. Good pick. Um, what do you think? Do you think Aberg has what it takes to win the first, lead the first round? Or yes. do you think he's a late he's, bloomer? He, okay. No, he, he can go wire to wire. He's actually a very good first round player. I bet him first round before. And Drew, another good point. When you have guys at 14 to 1, I can guarantee you one thing. I bet he's over 20 to 1 to be a first round leader. Yep. Guys who are chalk, you always get a better price for them first round. So if you like the Rory McElroys, the Schefflers, you bet them first round too, because say they're eight to one, you'll get them 15 or 20 to one yep. first round leader because a lot of the underdog guys, that's why they price them not as high as their odds because there's a lot of Thursday warriors out there, guys who come out hot and fade over the weekend. I do right? also like uh, Hideki Matsuyama, 25 to one to win this tournament cam. Uh, he, we know he plays well at the Masters as evidenced by his win. Um, and I think this is, he wants to ramp up leading into it. He hasn't played the greatest lately, mm-hmm. but I think there, it's rare that you get him at this high of a number. Um, so I got to take that. I also like, ter- there's two tournament three balls I like, Cam. I like Alex Norn to beat Harmon and Cole. Uh, yep. I think that's easy. Cold. Uh, Aberg to beat McElroy and Corey Connors. If you parlay these together, it's four to one plus 400. I love your picks. Drew, I really like your golf picks. I actually want you to send me some. I'm going to ride some of yours. I, 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 I do Har- like playing matchup bets, Cam. Oh, matchup bets are great. And another thing is you can really fade. Like I wrote Eric Cole when he was hot. He's kind of a cold player. People are going to bet Connors. He's the defending champion, but I just don't think he has the pro. Like I'll take Aberg over him and McElroy. I don't know what he's going to do. The thing about McElroy is he's a dangerous guy, but he also, a lot of these great players work on shots before the masters. Aberg's the type of guy to say, screw it. I just want to play golf. Well, and so, Aberg needs the money. He's a younger guy. Cam Rory doesn't need this this two million dollar paycheck. Aberg's got a lot of money for a young guy. He's flush. He's also made millions and millions of dollars. But Rory's Fair. got even. But I'm saying Rory's stacks. got like the yeah. the he's got Mr. Burns yeah. money. Yeah, he's he's loaded. Yeah. Um. All right, Cam. Let's move to the ice quickly before we get out of here <laughs> uh, tonight. Eight games on the ice in the NHL. Bruins Predators probably the biggest matchup. Uh, two playoff teams on either side. Devils Penguins probably playoff lives on the on the line. Uh, your New Jersey Devils. You're going to the Rock next week, so you'll like them. Yep. Um, Canucks and Vegas as well. If Vegas wins this game, the Oilers, Oilers will only be three points back with two games in hand on the Canucks. Canucks do not want to lose this hockey game. Cam, um, any any things stand out to you tonight? I like Vancouver as an underdog in Vegas. I'm going to take the Florida Panthers minus one and a half plus 110 after Paul Maurice having a nervous breakdown against the Leafs in <laughs> Montreal. I know the Montreal Canadiens have been playing better, but I'm getting plus money for them to win by two. Empty netter always in play. I like the Devils, but I don't want to lay 60 cents. Sabres in Washington, do you have an opinion? That's a... I, I, I like the Capitals tonight. You know what? They might be a good dog. This is the type of game that Buffalo... Can they shouldn't be a dog. Game. That's why I like them. You know what? I like another. I like I like the Ottawa Senators as a dog against Minnesota. They win all of a sudden when it doesn't matter. Plus one twenty two. Cam, they love they love being the Stanley Cup winners of March April. So then their fans yeah. in the offseason can be like, look, we won eighty percent of our games between March twentieth and April eighteenth. That means we're going to win the cup. It's like no, 
You guys just went, went from being a top five pick to now 15th pick overall and not making the playoffs. They just like to ruin everything. Uh, and what do you think about Vancouver and the Knights? I like the I Canucks gotta, as an underdog in the road. You know what? I do too. So give me Vancouver plus 110, Ottawa plus 122. Uh, a parlay, I would take, I'm would take. i also going to take Florida minus one and a half. Any parlays, Drew? A money line parlay that we can put together before we go? So I got Capital everybody? Sends in Vancouver, three underdogs. Mm-hmm. Yep. And it pays. Oh, it's going to pay a nice, juicy. 10 to one. one. I'm thinking. Yep, yep. 10 to one. Sold, my friend. Drew sold. And Let's do it. We're going to have more Masters picks next week. More, more. There's tons of stuff. Go- Dude, this is a great time of the year. Maybe we'll get into a little more baseball. Drew, my Pittsburgh Pirates to start the year over wins. Undefeated, they started the year. And if you were to bet the Cam, Blue Jays I was watching the, the Pirates team. games, and I was like, yeah, yeah, the, these guys yeah, are freaking winning just like Cam said they would. I was I like. They're, they're a young team. But the Blue Jays, if you had the bet, Blue Jays, first team to get no hit. You might think it'd be like the Marlins or somebody. Dude, this guy pitching for the Astros, nobody knows who he is, too. Nobody the Blue Jays suck, Cam. I'm sorry. Yeah, they do. Oh, I'm, I'm not going to defend that. I, anyway, I'm done. You're right. Uh, Blue Jays are who they are. Let's just put it out for what it is. Toronto teams will never come through for you. Yes, they will maybe they'll lose the playoffs this year. We'll see. They're, they're, they're only two games or two points back of the – two points back or four points back of the Florida Panthers. Yeah. They're close uh, for home ice advantage in the first round. So sorry, Drew, I'm texting so much. It's a guy that I owe money and he's uh, relentless. Oh, oh, you got to start paying off your people there, Cam. <laughs> no, I, I gave the guy a loan a long time ago, friend, and he's given me some uh, parts to fix my toilet too. So now I have double problems. The parts are coming. Uh, this is going to be fun, Drew. So as I leave right now, I got a leaky sink and a toilet. Uh, enjoy your enjoy your night, everybody. Do your flex seal, your flex seal trick. <laughs> Just like... what, the, the, what, the fumes that I inhaled yeah. and like <laughs> starfished on my bathroom floor, almost dead. Here's another thing about flex seal. Be, be very careful with that product. By the way, you cannot drive a boat through gator infested waters with it. <laughs> and if you're fixing your sink, it'll put holes in it and make it worse. Yes. I bet it's good for like just little minor like things. No, like, I don't think it's good for anything, small... Cam. I'll be honest. Well, Let's just say one thing. If I have a hole in my roof, I'm going to call a shingle guy. I'm not going to put flex seal on it. Yeah, yeah. It's like, no, no, that's tape. when you get flex tape or like whatever. Yeah. It's just like the, all the other products. The flex seal family of products will not be used when you have a home. Yes. That's going to depreciate in value. Exactly. All right, everybody. Okay. That does it for our picks today. Uh, thank you for joining us. We will see you on Thursday where we'll go over <laughs> whatever we want on the weekend. We'll see, Cam. Uh, Everything. And maybe, maybe next weekend we can do a little live master show. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Put it out I'll there. be in New York, but well, I'll give you a call. Don't worry. I'll be around. All right. Sounds good. All right. See you, everybody. <laughs> this has been Drew and Stu. Follow Drew at Producer Drew and Cam at Cam Stewart Live. May the winners be yours. And all of the best bets hit.